Good morning. Let me welcome you to this uh, NPTEL lecture on uh, linear algebra. This is usually offered in the first semester of a postgraduate uh, course on uh, mathematics, be it uh, pure mathematics or applied mathematics. This is an absolutely fundamental course, absolutely fundamental area uh, which one uh, requires both in uh, pure uh, mathematics as well as in applied mathematics. For example, in uh, problems of engineering, starting from the basics uh, uh, of uh, linear transformations, vector spaces, inner product spaces, the idea is to uh, prove theorems. That is one of the main objectives of this course. Uh, there will be lots of examples that uh, we will be uh, discussing in this course. The video material has been uh, divided into several modules, uh, about 13 uh, modules are there. I will write down the titles of uh, each of these uh, modules and uh, also probably briefly tell you what each module contains. Uh, before that, uh, perhaps uh, I should uh, mention uh, two books. One, uh, bo both are both are classic uh, in a sense. The first one is Halmos's uh, uh, book, uh, Finite Dimensional Vector Spaces. So let me just write down the title and the author. Paul Halmos is the name of the author. The title of the book is Finite Dimensional Vector Spaces. Let me give uh, the reference to the latest uh, edition. It has appeared in uh, Springer in 2011. This is the undergraduate uh, text in mathematics, the so called uh, UTM series. There is another classic book uh, which is uh, followed in many universities, two authors uh, Hoffman and Kunze. The title is Linear Algebra. There is, I am referring to the Prentice Hall edition. Uh, which appeared in 2004. All right. Now, let me uh, give you the modules for this course. There are about, uh, as I mentioned, uh, there are about 13 uh, modules in this course. Uh, this introductory, le introductory lecture will be, uh, this introductory lecture uh, will be a brief one. The actual lectures will begin from the um, a second lecture. So, these are the uh, modules that we have. Module 1, systems of linear equations. This is approximately uh, in the lectures from 2 to 7. from the next lecture till the seventh lecture. We will be discussing uh, uh, mainly systems of uh, linear equations. The notions that uh, we will be discussing in this uh, module are uh, basically elementary row operations and then uh, uh, when uh, do we say that uh, two systems of linear equations are uh, equivalent. Uh, then we will look at uh, the elimination process, basically the Gaussian elimination process 
uh, which we learnt in uh, high school, for instance, we will formalize uh, Gaussian elimination by uh, means of uh, the elementary row operations. Uh, in particular, we will be looking at what are called as row reduced uh, echelon matrices. Um, also the notion of elementary matrices, we will be uh, studying both uh, homogeneous as well as uh, non-homogeneous uh, equations. Uh, how the solutions, uh, how do we characterize the existence of solutions of uh, homogeneous equations or non-homogeneous equation in terms of row reduced echelon matrices, in terms of uh, invertibility of the coefficient matrix. Etc. So, these will be the topics that uh, we will be discussing in this uh, first module. Uh, in the next three lectures, that is uh, from lectures 8 to 10, we will be discussing the second module. So, let me write down the title. The title is Vector Spaces. Vector Spaces, lectures uh, 8. Uh, to 10, approximately uh, 3 lectures. Vector space, the, the uh, uh, axiomatic definition of a vector space, uh, then lots of examples uh, of uh, vector spaces. We will also be discussing the notion of uh, subspaces of vector spaces, again uh, lots of examples of subspaces. And then uh, 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 spanning, uh, spanning sets for instance, we will uh, conclude this uh, second module with the notion of uh, uh, linear independence uh, of uh, uh, vectors, linear independent uh, uh, subsets of vector spaces. Module 3 will be basis and dimension. We will be discussing the notion of uh, basis and uh, basis and dimension. This will be in uh, covered in about approximately 4 lectures, lectures uh, 10 to 13. Part of uh, lecture 10 will, uh, we will discuss the notion of linear uh, dependence, linear independence of vectors. So, in this section on uh, uh, basis uh, and dimension, we will discuss uh, the notion of linear dependence, linear independence, look at lots of examples, some properties of linear independent subsets, etcetera. Uh, then the notion of uh, spanning subsets and then the notion of basis, the, which uh, then leads to the notion of dimension. Uh, towards the end of this uh, third module, we will also discuss the problem of determining the dimension of uh, the sum of two subspaces in a finite dimensional vector space. So, that will be module 3. Module 4, uh, perhaps uh, the most important uh, module in this course. We will discuss what are called as uh, linear transformations. The notion of linear transformations which are absolutely fundamental in uh, perhaps the whole of uh, mathematics. We will discuss linear transformations, uh, the definition of a linear transformation, examples, uh, then uh, two important subspaces that are associated with a linear transformation, the null space and the range space. We will look at lots of examples and we will also prove uh, an absolutely fundamental result for linear transformations uh, called the rank nullity dimension theorem. We will also discuss the notion of uh, what is called as a row rank of a matrix, the column rank of a matrix and the equality of the row rank and the column rank of a matrix. So, these things will be discussed in this uh, fourth module and uh, we will be uh, covering these uh, topics in lectures uh, 14 to 18. In the fifth module, we will discuss the notion of the matrix of a linear transformation. The matrix of a linear transformation. This will be done in uh, approximately 3 lectures lectures uh, 18 to 20. So, in lecture 18 when we discuss linear transformations towards the end of the fourth module, 
we will introduce a notion of the matrix of a vector in a vector space and then uh, from lecture 19 onwards uh, for, for a couple of lectures we will discuss the notion of uh, the matrix of a linear transformation uh, where we will discuss uh, also uh, what is the matrix of the composition operation composition of two linear transformations and what is the matrix of the inverse transformation. Uh, we will also answer the question as to how the matrices of a linear transformation corresponding to two different bases behave, okay. how are they related, the notion of uh, similarity transformation. Now, this will also be discussed in uh, the fifth module. In uh, module 6, we will discuss the notion of uh, linear functionals, uh, especially uh, what is called as the dual space. These uh, topics will be discussed uh, in the lectures 21 to 25. So, what is, uh, what is a linear functional, uh, then uh, the representation theorem, we will be proving a representation theorem for a linear functional on a finite dimensional uh, vector space. Then the notion of the dual space, more importantly the notion of a dual basis. Uh, some uh, numerical examples for constructing uh, dual basis. Uh, we'll also discuss what is called as uh, an annihilator of a subspace. An annihilator is a subspace of the uh, dual space, for instance. Uh, we will also discuss the notion of the double dual space, and then, uh, of course, the double annihilator. We'll also uh, consider the problem of uh, proving that a subspace is equal to its uh, double annihilator under uh, a certain identification. So, these topics uh, will be discussed in uh, module 6, linear functionals and uh, in uh, module 7, approximately uh, 26 uh, to 29, about 4 lectures, we will discuss the notion of eigenvalues and eigenvectors of linear transformations. So, we look at uh, examples of linear transformations uh, and ask the question as to whether these linear transformations have eigenvalues, uh, whether they have enough eigenvectors, etc. Uh, what is the matrix formulation of uh, such a problem? Uh, then the diagonalizability, when is uh, a linear transformation diagonalizable? What, what is the definition? And we look at some examples uh, of uh, matrices which are diagonalizable, some other matrices which are not diagonalizable, etc. We will also look at one important characterization of diagonalizability in terms of uh, the characteristic polynomial and the dimensions of the eigenspaces. The notion of a characteristic polynomial leads to the notion of an eigenvalue. So, we look at a characterization of diagonalizability in terms of uh, characteristic polynomial and eigenspaces, uh, the dimensions, dimensions of the eigenspaces, whether the dimensions uh, of the eigenspaces add up to the dimension of the domain of the vector space that we start with. We will uh, ask this question. We will also discuss the relationship between uh, a minimal polynomial and the characteristic polynomial. So, there is a notion of a, uh, there are at least two polynomials that one would uh, uh, like to consider for a linear transformation, the minimal polynomial and the characteristic polynomial. What, what are their relationships? Uh, what are the relationships uh, uh, when uh, what can one say about the minimum polynomial, for instance, when the operator is uh, diagonalizable, etc. So, we will answer these uh, questions. Uh, towards the end of this uh, seventh lecture, uh, seventh module, towards the end of the seventh module, uh, we will also discuss a proof of the Cayley Hamilton theorem for uh, matrices. The Cayley Hamilton theorem uh, uh, informally uh, says that uh, the characteristic polynomial of uh, an operator is an annihilating polynomial of that operator. In the eighth module, uh, in 
about three lectures. In this module, we'll, uh, this eighth module, we'll discuss the notion of invariant subspaces and triangulability. So, for instance, what is an invariant subspace uh, of uh, a linear transformation? Uh, then, uh, what is the t-conductor of a subspace? The notion of uh, triangulability, which is more general than diagonalizability. Of course, we will also discuss uh, diagonalizability in terms of the uh, minimal polynomial and independent subspaces. For instance, uh, in this module, we will also discuss the notion of uh, projection operators. Uh, towards the end of uh, this uh, module, we will also prove that uh, projection matrices, for instance, are uh, diagonalizable. So, that will be uh, the topics that are covered in uh, module 8. In the next module, we will look at uh, direct sum decompositions. This will be discussed in about two lectures. What is a direct sum decomposition of a vector space? Then what are the relationships between direct sum decompositions and projections? In fact, we will show that there is a one to one correspondence. We will discuss the notion of invariant subspaces. We will we will recall this notion that was introduced in the previous module and then uh, uh, study characterization of uh, diagonalizability in terms of uh, invariant subspaces, etc. Uh, one important result that we will prove here is uh, a characterization of diagonalizability involving projection operators and direct sum decompositions. Of course, we will discuss uh, lots of numerical examples to illustrate the main results. Uh, in the tenth module, uh, which is about, uh, which contains about four lectures, we will discuss the notions of the primary decomposition theorem and uh, the cyclic decomposition theorem. So, this is uh, covered in lectures 35, 38. So, here we will discuss the notion of uh, primary decomposition theorem, which is essentially uh, looking at uh, a very general form of the characteristic polynomial, like the primary, uh, uh, the factorization. Uh, uh, which is similar to the factorization of a number in terms of the prime powers of its factors. We will also discuss the notion of the Jordan decomposition uh, theorem, which is a consequence of the primary decomposition theorem and also uh, another result called uh, cyclic decomposition theorem. Now, these results will be uh, proved in uh, these uh, four lectures. In the next module, we will discuss the notion of uh, inner product spaces, that is module 11 the notion of inner product spaces. This will be covered in about uh, four lectures. So, what is the notion of an inner product uh, on a vector space? Uh, we will look at several examples of inner product spaces, then uh, look at the notion of a norm on uh, uh, a vector space coming through an inner product, for instance, uh, which allows us to generalize the notions of uh, uh, perpendicularity of uh, 
vectors on the plane or the three dimensional space. So, orthogonality will be discussed, orthonormality will be discussed. Um, consequently, we will be discussing the notion of the Gram Schmidt process of obtaining uh, an orthonormal set from a linearly independent set. As a consequence of uh, Gram Schmidt process, um, we will derive what is called as a QR decomposition of a matrix whose columns are linearly independent. We will uh, also show that a finite dimensional inner product space uh, always has an orthonormal basis. So, these topics uh, will be covered in these uh, four lectures on uh, inner product spaces. In the next module, module 12, we will study the notion of what is called as the best approximate solutions generally best approximation that is about, uh, about 3 lectures 43, 45 the notion of best approximation. So, what is this notion of best approximation in an inner product space? Uh, more importantly, uh, how does this uh, translate into uh, the problem of finding least square solutions for uh, linear equations, uh, possibly inconsistent systems of linear equations. We will uh, be using uh, the QR decomposition that was uh, studied in the previous uh, module and uh, using the QR decomposition we will obtain a solution. We will also discuss um, orthogonal complementary subspace given a subspace, uh, the orthogonal complementary subspace, what are its properties? So, we will discuss this. Uh, what comes along is the notion of an orthogonal projection. So, this will also be discussed in this uh, module and how are orthogonal projections related to the notion of best approximation, okay, just to complete the circle. So, the, these topics will be discussed in this uh, uh, module on best approximation. The next module is we in the next two modules we will discuss the notion of the adjoint of an operator. The next two lectures the adjoint of an operator. So, this will be discussed uh, in lectures 46 and 47. So, the notion of the adjoint operator. Uh, uh, some of its uh, properties, some examples and then uh, uh, given an operator uh, on a finite dimensional inner product space, what is the relationship of the matrix of this operator relative to an orthonormal basis and the matrix of its adjoint relative to the same orthonormal basis. So, we will discuss this uh, relationship. We will also discuss towards the end of this uh, module the notion of inner product space isomorphisms and give a characterization of uh, when an operator on a finite dimensional inner product space is uh, an inner product space isomorphism. In the last module, the 14th uh, module, we will discuss uh, three important classes of operators on uh, inner product spaces, self adjoint, normal and uh, unitary operators. So, this will be done in uh, lectures. Uh, so, this is the last part of this uh, course. Um, the topics uh, that we will be discussing in this uh, module are uh, uh, first unitary operators, then normal operators and then self adjoint operators. Um, unitary operators, examples, then uh, what are the properties of the matrix of a unitary operator relative to a basis, etcetera. We will discuss the notion of uh, unitary equivalence of operators, which generalizes diagonalizability in some sense, and then uh, we will switch to self adjoint operators, and for self adjoint operators. Uh, we will look at some examples both finite dimensional and infinite dimensional and uh, importantly prove what is called as uh, 
the uh, spectral theorem for a self adjoint operator. We will be requiring some uh, properties of uh, eigenvalues, eigenvectors of self adjoint operators. We will discuss those and then prove the self uh, spectral theorem for a self adjoint operator. The third uh, topic uh, in this module uh, is that of a normal operator. So, so we look at uh, examples again, uh, look at um, study some properties of eigenvalues, eigenvectors and then prove what is called as uh, the spectral theorem for a normal operator. For uh, both uh, the spectral theorem for a self adjoint operator and for uh, the normal operator, we will look at the matrix version. So, matrix versions of these results, the spectral theorem will also be presented. So, these are uh, the uh, uh, 14 modules uh, that uh, cover uh, the topics uh, that one would normally discuss in a first course on uh, linear algebra. Let us uh, move on to the actual lectures uh, from the next lecture onwards. Thank you.